All right, guys, I wanted to show you this uh, footage that I put together for Hugh Newman from Megalith Mania. Basically, he gave me a bunch of measurements for where the sun was positioned in 2022 when he observed the winter solstice. He has a whole video about this that he just released. And one of the things we wanted to look at, and what you're looking at here, is what the sun's position in the sky would have looked like 9000 BC. So... That means it would have shifted about two degrees to the south. And the position of, or the angle of the sun coming in through the hole would have hit the face more squarely on the front of the nose. And so the, the first bar that I show, the first yellow bar that I show, is where the sun hits the head first, going through the hole, traveling from the sun. And the other bar shows where the sun hits the head last, traveling through the pole, going back to the sun. And so this gives you kind of an idea of what pillars might have been in the way. And I know there's a couple of theories that Hugh has about this too. Pillars being positioned in the right place could give the effect of all of a sudden the face is just brightly lit. Like it's dark one moment and then the next just boom, it comes into sunlight. And I, I just wanted to show the roof, too, because I, I don't think the idea of this face being lit is mutually exclusive to it not having a roof. I think the face in the pillared pit could have been lit while also having a pretty complex roof structure over the larger enclosure. And I believe there's models at Gobekli Tepe that show that Gobekli Tepe was most likely a roofed enclosure. And I believe that's kind of the consensus of belief when it comes to these pillared pits. But I'm still not 100% on that, and I don't know if anybody is just yet. And I know I got comments before about why would there have been holes in a roof or why would you build a roof and then have holes. But one of the more famous examples of a hole in a roof would be the Roman Pantheon. Um, it has what's called a compluvian in the top of the roof and it allows for sunlight to come through and provide ambient light throughout the entirety of the space, throughout the entirety of the day. And it's been doing that for nearly 2,000 years. Even the roundhouses in England, sometimes the thatching just really became thinner at the top of the structure so that it would allow for smoke to exhaust. And I, I know I'm going to get a ton of pushback on, you know, where did the trees come from? Were there trees at that time? Has there been any evidence of the roof? Um, I have seen evidence now of this area having been largely forest right after the younger Dryas. And it comes from this archaeologist that's researching beer, actually, and the archaeology of beer. And they know that they found beer at Gobekli Tepe. And what they think has happened was this area used to have a large forest, and then the forest collapsed. And, you know, it might have been partly human uh, using the forest, but it also might have been just the weather change after the Younger Dryas. And so the forest collapsed and it gave rise to the barleys and the grains and the grasses that were cultivated for beer production. And so I think there was evidence of forests around this area. And really when it comes to wood and archaeology, Wood starts to decompose after three years. After 10 years under just regular conditions, you'd really be hard pressed to find anything wood compared to the rock and stone around it. You really have to have the absolute right conditions to preserve wood. And it wasn't what I expected, but now that I know it, it makes a lot of sense. It needs to be waterlogged. Uh, it needs to be waterlogged in a way, and the wood needs to be thoroughly it, just saturated in water for a length of period in order to 
have the hopes of preserving. And so that's why we're finding the 500,000 year old pieces of wood that make up foundations of homes and uh, like even the Shagir idol that the oldest wooden idol ever found, you know, that was in a waterlogged location. So I, I do think there is a possibility of wood. Um, and I think over time, it's probably going to make more sense that there was some sort of framework to hold these structures up. I think the alignments of the winter solstice are, are absolutely important to a culture that's learning how to farm, that's learning about migration of animals, that needs to know what time of the year it is. So it would have been very important for this culture uh, each year to know exactly the day that was the shortest day of the year. And it probably would have been a celebration event that it was going to get better from here on out. At the very least, it probably indicated time. When I look at this alignment, I just think about not having a clock and not knowing how to orientate myself in time. I could orientate myself in space, but how do you orientate your, yourself in space and time? And so I don't think it's really this far-fetched idea that there would have been this really cool alignment that this community could behold um, as a celebration each year. And I mean, the winter solstice literally is the shortest day of the year. And from that point forward, it, it gets better and better and better. And so I would imagine that there would have needed to be winter solstice alignments. And I, I think there would have needed to be an indication of the spring equinox. I think it would have given an indication to a, an entire population of how to orientate themselves in space and time. And that may be at the root of what's essential in civilization is an orientation of not only where you're at in space, but also in time. And it allows you to do things like harvest on an annual basis. It allows you to start to understand the migration patterns of animals. So I, I think those may be two of the building blocks of civilization, as indicated in this structure. I don't know, guys. Tell me what you think, and I'll put a link to Hugh's video in the description.